Hello, and thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, uh, one we're very excited over, Postgraduate Dermatology Program for Nurse Practitioners. My name is Dr. Lynn Dunphy, and I'm the Director of NP Education for Visual Diagnosis. Uh, you may know my name um, as the author of um, Primary Care, the Art and Science of Advanced Practice Nursing, a large textbook that you, that's used in many of your NP programs. We're now finishing up the sixth edition of that. Before we get started, I'd like to share a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with all the registrants. We encourage questions from the audience, so please submit your questions in the Q&A box, and we will get as many, we'll get to as many of them as we can once the lecture is complete. We ask that you also take our survey at the end to provide feedback. Now, most of all, I'm pleased to welcome our presenters, Dr. Margaret Babanich and Dr. Susan Bolfin. And uh, I know them both as I am a former faculty from uh, Florida Atlantic University College of Nursing, and we've uh, the work on this uh, NP pro, this DERM residency began many years ago, which Dr. Bolfin will share a little bit more uh, about you. So it's been uh, a great journey for all of us. And it was Dr. Bolfin who located Dr. Margaret Babanich, who is an assistant professor at Case Western Reserve School of Medicine and Nursing, where she completed her DNP and master's in nursing as a certified FNP at University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Centers in Cleveland, Ohio. Her active clinical practice has a special focus on immunodermatology. Dr. Babanich created a two-year post-master's dermatology NP training model at the UHCMC modeled after the Leahy Clinic program. She is the lead faculty for the dermatology specialty track in a master's NP certificate program at Florida Atlantic University. Dr. Susan Bolfin is a professor and director of the DNP program at Atlantic at Florida Atlantic University and has been a family nurse practitioner for over 37 years. Her expertise, she was a pioneer in the state of Florida. Her expertise and in innovative leadership as a trailblazer for NPs extends to public health, women's health, quality improvement and caring, caring science arenas and have led to her fellowship nominations. Previous awards and appointments include the National Human Genome Research Scholarship, Mercer University Distinguished Faculty of the Year, 3.6 million in HRSA awards for NP education, and committee positions with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and National Organization of Nurse Practitioner Faculty. Now to get started, I am turning this over to Dr. Babanich and Dr. Bolfin, who I think is beginning. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Dunphy. It was a pleasure to work with you in the very beginning when we started just thinking about this DERM program. I'm very grateful to join you, Dr. Babanich, um, and the visual diagnosis team today. So I wanna just talk a little bit about the birth and the <laughs> beginning, very beginning of this program. We. Um, Years ago, about six years ago, I was approached by the FAU president who wanted to introduce me to a couple of entrepreneurs who were um, doing business in dermatology. And they had asked him if we could possibly create some kind of pipeline practitioner to be well trained in dermatology because they knew there, there really weren't any programs like that in the country. They understood the added value of having nurse practitioners in dermatology, um, but they did identify some barriers because when students, NP students would come to the practices, it was on the job training and required you know, time for, for the preceptors to set aside to teach the students. And they thought it would be more efficient and efficacious if we were to develop a program that they would already be well-trained and be able to hit the ground running when they join these practices as students. So that was one of the reasons that they were motivated to see this um, program begin. So Dr. Dunphy and I started working on it. And um, based on my personal knowledge, when I was in nurse practitioner school back in 1979, I did a little 
rotation in a dermatology practice and loved it. But most, as you know, as nurse practitioners, um, most of our specialty hours are limited when we're in those programs. So uh, typically isn't enough derm to really be able to join a practice and be a full member. So we thought about it and we decided this would be a good program to create. So I started doing a lot of background work and all of the um, things that I looked at, I, I, I really wanted to see that there was a need, that there was a genuine need for the program. And there really wasn't much written um, about nurse practitioners and dermatology and, and what would really be the evidence for it. But I did garner a few things and I'm going to try to advance the slide here. So there was a call for structured dermatology education. The average wait times for appointments are about 32 days. And if you have Medicaid, that wait time doubles. There are obviously disparities. Uh, only 29% of dermatologists accept Medicaid. So this results in increased access to care. That delays diagnoses, that delays treatment, which results in a higher cost and potentially fatal outcomes. So nurse practitioners and physician assistants are pretty well situated to fill the gap and provide better access to care. But unfortunately, there are no very, very few really structured programs for nurse practitioners. So when they go to these practices, they lack the knowledge, skills, and competencies to really provide high quality care. Um, in nursing, the American Nurses Credentialing Center and the American Association of Nurse Practitioners do provide advanced certification in certain specialties, such as orthopedics, emergency care, palliative care, and dermatologic care. But there is still not a whole lot available for nurses who want to sit for that exam in dermatology to really get the training and the education that they need. So having said that, nurse uh, practitioner clinical dermatology education is sporadic and inconsistent. So knowing this, there really was a need. I tried to dig deep into what is the state of dermatology education here in our country. And as I was doing that, two names kept popping up, Dr. Babanich and Mary Nolan. And I was looking and reading these articles and uh, looking at the programs. And I thought, I, I really need to talk to someone. So I emailed Dr. Babanich and she actually responded in quite a timely manner. And we both had um, our eye on the prize. This would be a great program to start. She was more than willing to collaborate on it. And um, it, it's the rest is history. So I will let Dr. Babanich go ahead and, and talk about where we how we answered the call for structured dermatology education. Oh, you're on mute, Margaret. <laughs> I, have to, I have to at least do that once, right? <laughs> thank you, Dr. Bolfin and Dr. Dumphy. And, you know, thank you, Visual DX, for inviting us to be here. Um, um, I, I want to begin by um, my background was, you know, I was, certified as an FNP. And one of the things that was so important was, you know, doing dermatology, providing dermatology in primary care was awful. It was so difficult. It was painful to see a rash on one of your appointments because it was, um, we were so undereducated. And it's not just nurse practitioners, is most healthcare um, graduate students, PAs, NPs, and physicians, we get such minimal you know, education and experience, clinical experience during our graduate programs that when you do go out to practice, you know, it's, it's woefully um, uh, undereducated. So it was very difficult. So I practiced in primary care and I found it was um, a struggle. So I went into dermatology. Um, I was fortunate to go into dermatology into a postmaster's two-year program. It was modeled after my, my esteemed colleague, um, Mary Nolan. And that's when I really began to understand. I knew that there was a knowledge deficit between practicing in primary care and practicing dermatology, but I never understood it until I um, completed this kind of an educational program. 
So the key here is that there is a significant difference in the dermatology that we learn in our graduate program and the dermatology knowledge and skills, um, which basically equate to competency to become a nurse practitioner practicing or specializing in dermatology. Now, what are those competencies? They weren't just pulled out of the air. Actually, we have data that we collected. There was a Delphi study, and that's really what got the ball rolling. What is it? What knowledge and what skills and what abilities do nurse practitioners need in order to practice in dermatology? And that's data helped um, us. And it's also a couple other very critical documents that every nurse practitioner who decides to practice in dermatology should know about these. First and foremost, we have a scope and a standards of practice that have been published. We have published competencies and that's just not what should you know if you really wanna be really good. This is entry level competencies. And then once you've been practicing for about two or three years and you've developed that competency and that confidence, we have a dermatology certification and it is governed by the Dermatology Nurse Practitioner Certification Board, an independent group. And that's what we do in nursing, whether you're FNP, AMP, is we rely on these specialty certifications to help validate that knowledge. So that is how we came together to develop this competency-based program at Florida Atlantic University. We do other things though. We also created milestones. Since Mary Nolan and I have at least 10 plus years in the educational part of teaching dermatology in a formal program, um, we use, we understand that every nurse practitioner and every practice and every collaborator is different. And we need to establish milestones. You know, in the first, you know, two months of working in dermatology, what is the expectation? What milestones could you set to achieve? And how do you document those? So we help our students um, do that. One of the most important things in, um, is, is kind of the reality of understand, this is your knowledge. And this is your confidence in your knowledge. But the reality is for every nurse practitioner who completed our program, whether you're family, adult, women's health, um, we have some fundamental knowledge. But if you go into dermatology, there are thousands, thousands of dermatoses. And if you are practicing in dermatology, you need to understand that you need to be able to create a differential diagnosis and that diagnostic accuracy is very important. So one, you need to learn about these diagnoses. You need to two, learn how to develop that differential. And three, you need to understand there are so many more differentials. One of the really good um, axioms that we use not just in nursing, but the PAs and the physicians in dermatology um, use this is that your eyes, and remember dermatology is a really, really visual um, specialty. Your eyes only see what your mind knows. So when the patient walks in with something that looks like eczema, well, based on our graduate education, it's probably eczema atopic dermatitis. But guess what? There are a lot of things like cutaneous T cell lymphoma or lupus erythematosus. You can't miss those. So that's why the education, the resources that we use um, in improving that diagnostic accuracy are very, very important. And of course, in the program, we draw from um, dermatology NPs, PAs, and dermatologists across the country who are experts. And all of this, of course, this is a dermatology postgraduate program. 
And I could not be more privileged than to be working with FAU's Christine E. Lynn College of Nursing. And our nursing science is really provides the basis for this. The next slide is, um, I wanted to, this is um, our inaugural class that began January 1st, excuse me, January 10th this year. And um, we've been on a journey. We're currently in the second semester. We have 18 students that started. We have a few actually um, who dropped out for actually good reasons. Um, one went on to sit for his, um, is sitting for his medical boards and so forth, several others, um, good things. But the interesting things are these are nurse practitioners from across the country, from Washington, Alaska, Boston, they have varied backgrounds as well. And they are very different um, uh, prepared um, and they're going into different roles. The next slide, please. The question that we have a lot, Dr. Bolfin and myself is, you know, why do we, why are we doing this? Why postgraduate? Well, Dr. Bolfin already shared with you that there is an incredible um, rising need for dermatology. As our aging population um, rises, we have more people retiring, including not just patients who are seeking, you know, above 60 skin cancer, skin conditions, but those providers are also retiring. And so it's an amazing opportunity as everybody's scope of practice has changed and expanded. Nurse practitioners have really stepped into um, this um, uh, specialty. Um, and it's very important because we not only in our program have nurse practitioners who want to get into dermatology, but we have dermatology nurse practitioners who already are in and practicing dermatology. And I have to say this, several who were not in dermatology have gotten jobs during this process. And it's very attractive to an employer when they, they, they go, they apply for these jobs and they see that they're in this formal post-master's program. But one of the most important point is, you know, post-graduate nurse practitioners who are in primary care recognize I need more knowledge before I start specializing because the bar is high. And then we have nurse practitioners who have been in dermatology already and they realize they're missing something and that's important. So we have both those who have never been in dermatology who desire to go into dermatology and those who have already been there as well as their colleagues, their physician colleagues or their practices who um, are recognizing, listen, I can't put you through the formal program um, and I don't know the structure. I don't know what you were educated to do, but I know where I want you to be. And um, you know, they have their physician support and practices that they're present in this program. To give you a little bit of an idea, it's a three semester program and it covers both didactic. And when I say didactic, we have three basic semesters, the spring, the summer, and the fall. The dermatology essentials begins with the science. You know, one of the things that I think um, Mary Nolan and I have really appreciated along with our physician colleagues is that nurse practitioners, um, as well as PAs, we um, are educated to a certain level of the sciences. Now, when I say basic sciences, I don't mean basic biology. I'm talking about the immunology, genetics, pharmacology, microbiology. We spend a lot of the first um, semester on these foundational sciences and we advance what you had in your graduate program to really what you need to, to, to use in not just common dermatoses, but into the complex ones that we get into. The second and third semester are clinical semesters as well as didactic. And I'll share some more with you about that in a moment. We also take the time to twice during this program, go to Florida Atlantic University. They have a state-of-the-art um, 
um, teaching facility, which we're very privileged. And we do a great deal of hands-on learning, including a dermoscopy workshop where we have one day where one of the leading dermoscopy um, educators in the country is sitting with us elbow to elbow and we are doing dermoscopy. Um, as well as the clinical experiences. We do help guide the clinical experiences, the expectations, um, and throughout the second and third semester. This is uh, our students. This is also Mary Noland, who is pretty much the uh, mother of uh, dermatology and pea education. To give you a little meat and potatoes, um, I can help you understand. We have a very defined curriculum. We meet every Monday evening. And remember what I said, we have some people in Alaska and then we have people on the East Coast. So we find Monday evening at seven to nine, a time when we all come together and we meet. And we have a didactic session, but most everybody, no, everybody in the program um, works. So there's always occasions, whether it's work or life or other things that happen. So we record these didactic sessions and it's a great deal of interchange during those sessions. So that's where we do PowerPoints. We do, we have grand rounds. Um, and the important thing is during these um, didactics, as well as throughout the second, third semester during the clinical, we provide resources as students at FAU, we have um, the library access. And in the library access, we have eBooks that are everything from dermatopathology to pediatric dermatology and so forth. And you have access to that. Another resource that is absolutely invaluable is that we provide our students with a subscription for the, for the program to Visual DX. And this is absolutely fundamental. And the reason why is because when you first started dermatology, remember what I said, is that you're learning morphology, but there's thousands of these um, dermatoses. So the important thing is you have to understand if we begin to build that differential, they're using this software program and this application, not just during the didactics, not just during grand rounds, but when they go out to clinical, they begin to build their differential diagnosis so they can become um, more aware and routine and have knowledge and access to those dermatoses that they've never heard of, or maybe they've never seen, but they are not to be missed. I mentioned the first semester is really, we're steeped in our um, advanced sciences, our second and third, our second, we begin in clinical. We are talking about most of the common dermatoses and then we advance into more complex pharmacology and um, uh, skin conditions. Um, guidance, we provide guidance for all the clinical sites. Um, we do not find your clinical site for you, but we have made a lot of networking to assist our students to help them match up with the right providers. Um, we also help our students and um, actually do a great deal to get them into national dermatology conferences at no cost. We have great colleagues out there who've been kind and really appreciate what the FAU students um, um, have and are becoming. And then we help them with a learning plan because even when you're done with the FAU program, you'll have about 500 hours of clinical experience. And then you'll go into your practice and you will continue to amass those clinical experience. That you'll take and you'll take those hours and build towards your dermatology certification. Um, and that is important because remember what I said, that's the validation of your nursing knowledge. Um, and so that requires about 3000 hours. So at least the, the program is about 500 and that would contribute toward it. So this is our Monday night and um, it's very lively. Um, one of the things that um, we got a great deal of feedback on was that um, the networking is so, so important, not just in during this didactic sessions, but um, in, in Florida. Um, I can tell you that um, 
one of our students was um, in a um, a uh, in the running for a new dermatology position, along with um, about 250 other nurse practitioners and PAs, and she was accepted as the one. Um, so I think this is really, really important um, to know. Um, as I mentioned, um, we Zoom from across the country, but we do go to campus in Florida. Um, everybody goes back to their home state. I'm answering a question, but I just saw it pop up. Everybody goes back to their home state where you will do your clinical hours. So you do have to be licensed as a nurse practitioner in that home state. I can, I can go ahead and cover the eligibility. Thank you, Dr. Babanich. That was great. Um, so if you are considering this program, I just want to tell you a little bit more about uh, what we require and how to go about applying. You must be a nationally certified nurse practitioner, either family, adult gero, pediatric, or women's health. You might be able to um, begin the program if you haven't yet finished your master's if, or your last semester of your DMP program and you still need to sit for boards, um, we will consider allowing you to start, but you won't be able to do any clinical obviously until you gain your, your license, uh, your national certification as a nurse practitioner. We do require two letters of recommendation from healthcare uh, colleagues or supervisors. Joe Latito helps us, he uh, coordinates the program and he is very helpful. So that's his email address right there. I'm sure you're wondering what the cost is. Uh, the first two semesters are each 4,000 and the last semester is 6,000. Um, there are two labs and the lab fee for each is $175. The classes are conducted online through the Canvas system with regularly scheduled live meetings. Some of the, the live meetings are typically on Monday nights uh, in the spring. I think in the summer, they're not every Monday. They give you a little time off, but uh, in the fall, again, they're every Monday. So there are two skills labs. The first one is in the summer and the second one is in the fall. Uh, the dates have been like around May and September. Uh, the class for the next cohort will start January of 2022. And if you have any specific questions about the educational content, the certification, or any dermatology questions, you can email Dr. Babanich. Any application or registration enrollment questions, you would contact Joe Latito. So that pretty much concludes what the uh, requirements are to um, apply. We do conduct interviews. Um, Zoom interviews with each candidate, it's competitive, and we have space for approximately 25 to 30 students. So um, yeah, we, we will be looking at applications and interviewing this fall for the next class that starts in January. Okay, so now I'd like to open it up for any questions you might have. I, I want to thank both Margaret Bobinich and Dr. Bolfin very much for this presentation. And uh, it, it, it's very, um, very uh, insightful. Uh, we have some time for some questions and there are some in the Q&A box, which we'll start. Uh, there was one about having a Florida license, but I think that's already been clarified, correct? Sue, any, or any comments on that? Right. It just has to be national certification and your license can be in whatever state where you're going to practice. Uh, another question is, do you accept new FNP graduates? I think you've addressed that a little bit, yes. but if you want to elaborate a little further. We do. And again, the first semester, if you're just finishing up, um, let's say you're going to be done in May, you still qualify for that first to apply and be admitted in January because we need you to be nationally certified by uh, May. So the, it starts in January as long as you're able to sit for the exam. Do you have anything to add, Margaret? I think sometimes it's really nice to have a new graduate. Um, you don't have to unlearn bad habits, uh, quite honestly. <laughs> so um, 
yes, we do welcome new graduates as long as you've got your, your license and you're ready to go. Um, because the truth is a lot of new graduates are being hired straight out of um, either NP programs or PA programs. And so, you know, more and more they're, they're being tapped. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, another question is, do you accept Canadian NPs? I hadn't really thought about that. Well, you know, working through it, the truth is, is that, you know, we don't govern over your clinical. And if you go back and do your clinical in um, Canada, there's, I don't, it, it's not going to change what we teach you. Not at all. Um, the only, um, the only caveat that I can think of is, um, is the, um, you, uh, you will get um, CEs for your attendance. And I think Canada accepts the United States CEs. So um, okay. Sue, what do you think? Yeah, uh, if, if your board of nursing in Canada, wherever you're from, um, will accept it. The, I forgot to go over the um, first and second semesters are each 40, and then the last one is 60. So you'll have 140 continuing education credits and um, I know it works in Canada, but I, we probably could accept you. I'd have to just verify that with FA, but I, I don't see a problem because we do have students from other countries in our nursing program. So I think it would probably work. I, I would think so uh, too, Sue. I, I, I mean, for some of you, like the questions about the Florida license, I mean, the, this kind of program is under a different set of uh, rubrics, so to speak, than the regular state tuition programs. Right. Um, so there's there's a lot of flexibility, I would say, from what I my understanding of it is. Is that correct? I agree. Yes. Um, at, and the next question is, um, how long are the labs and um, when, it, when you're attending them and stuff? And uh, in terms of the presentation, I wonder, I had a few questions about that myself. If you could explain a little bit more about like the hands-on labs, how they're done and what you do there. And, you know, do they get help getting set up um, someplace to stay in Boca or anything like that? So, uh, you know, we've, we've had a great deal of support from FAU. And so we organize the schedule. Most people come in the night before. We have a full day um, in the spring. It's a full two day. In the fall, it's two and a half days. Um, and, you, you know, everybody, um, there's lots of local, um, local hotels. We don't require that you stay any place in specifically because some people want to use their points and so forth. So um, we provide the structure for it, but your getting there is, is up to you. Um, second question that you ask, Lynn, is what do we do there? So uh, we, have, we have an entire curriculum set out. We do cryotherapy. We do biopsies. We do skin exams. You know, so we do a lot of the suturing. And suturing yes. So a lot of the skills that you're going to be expected that most nurse practitioners should be able to perform and those that are included in the nationally published competencies. When we go into the, the second skills lab, we are going to be refining it more. So that's where we're going to be doing more dermoscopy. But again, um, it's, it's more hands-on treatments. That's what it is. And our students remarked actually that they had never had this kind of one-on-one. -on -one. So it's, it's um, a great lab. And we do, um, it's these are three days. So you get in the night before and it's always a weekend. So for those of you who work it, you don't have to take too much time off work if you're working Monday through Friday. I mean, it, it does look like a lot of fun. I have to say those <laughs> The students seem to enjoy it, yeah. And it is South Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they, the good thing was they were so, um, because they had seen each other online and they had gotten to know each other all semester, it was fun for them to come and see each other in person. And they mm -hmm. shared a lot. They really did. Actually, that was one of the, 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 the feedback was they really liked um, networking together. Networking's everything in dermatology. And one of them is actually moving there to Boca. <laughs> To, to, for a dermatology job, so go figure. 
Okay, next question is, if you work in dermatology, can you do your clinical hours at that clinic? Yes, you, yes, you can. Originally, we, we started off trying to separate it, but we have a lot of dermatology NPs who are new to practices. So we do, um, we've restructured it. So, but we want to provide you with structure. So it's still a learning environment. So yes, the answer. Um, if you look, oh, and then another, the next question is, uh, is there any financial aid? I think I know the answer. To that. Oh, you know what? No, you, we, um, Joe was very helpful in setting up Sally May. We now have, we are um, able to help you link up with Sally, Sally May to get a loan. So um, one of our students was successful. And then because of her, she kind of paved the way for for everybody else. And now Joe knows how to help you get that kind of a, a loan. And I, I don't know much about that, but all I know is yes, financial assistance is available. In the you know, and let me just make a comment. And this is from a very practical standpoint. You know, I was an FNP and we didn't have the high salaries that dermatology NPs had, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a specialty and that's the way it is. And although it might seem like you know, you know, a little bit of a steep tuition going back. Um, it pays off in spades. It's just, it's just nominal compared to the income that a nurse practitioner generates in a practice. So it's, and it actually gets you to a, a better competency, higher production, um, and just better satisfaction. Uh, and um, how do you get credit? Now this, I, I, I thought I wanted to ask this myself also. And how do you get credit for the additional 2,500 hours of experience? It seemed like such a long stretch. They have this support for the three semesters. They have minimally 500 hours. Um, if they're working in Durham all the time, can they count any of those other hours towards that total 3,000? Um, and, and this is new, so some of this may emerge, but is this like a mini support group, like that long passage through to sitting for the Durham certification? How do they navigate that? So um, first of all, the, there are competencies that are very clearly laid out. They're published, okay, so that's number one. Number two, if you think about it, um, so you get 500 hours from your program. You leave your program, you go into practice as a new dermatology NP, or maybe you're already there. So as you start to practice, you are not going to be ready to sit for certification in dermatology right away. If you think about it, 2,500 hours is about a year and a half, a little less. So it gives you, you really can't expect to sit for certification in dermatology in less than a year and a half to two years. You're just not ready for it because, I, you know, this is not simple. Dermatology NP practice is a high, high knowledge and skill. We take care of patients who have chronic diseases. We prescribe biologics. So you'll want that time. And, you know, the expectation is you'll get it. You'll get it. Um, so what roadmap is there out there? Well, we do have some review courses that are out there. We've put our students in those. And that's been an amazing experience. We have two professional organizations that are out there that um, support their members, the Dermatology Nurses Association that has the Nurse Practitioner Society. And we have the um, Society for Dermatology and Peace. And both those organizations are supportive in helping um, those nurse practitioners kind of find their way. And it's mentoring too. That's why that, again, that networking is important. I'm going to try to move along here. There's um, quite a few questions still. Is the certification recognized by AANP? Good question. The AANP certifications are, or the, the AANP's board for certification is credentialed or accredited through the American Board of Nursing Certifications, specialty certification. So it's the A, B, I can't remember all the letters. So 
the Dermatology Nurse Practitioner Certification Board has applied for accreditation through that, the same one that did my NP. Um, so it's not through AAMP, it's through an independent that is in the process of being credentialed. Uh, uh, there was one question, is it pass fail or ABCD grading? <laughs> um, it, it is ABCD grading, but uh, you know, here's the thing is this is a competitive group here. You know, you, and, and when you love these, these people are passionate about this. Nobody's falling to the wayside. So, and, you know, leave no man or woman behind or Derm NP. In other words, you get the support to get a good grade. <laughs> yes. Now, when are applications um, being submitted? Um, they, it will open, I believe, probably in the next week. Um, Joe is just finishing up. We have... Uh, some software we want to be in place. And I would say to look at the College of Nursing, FAU College of Nursing website within the next week or 10 days. And it, the link should be there to apply. If you don't see it, just email Joe Latito. He's, his email is on our College of Nursing website. And he will give you the, um, all the information. And we will interview as um, we accept the... Um the applications and when we're full, we're full. Yeah, and the other thing, right, the sooner you apply, the better because um, we don't wanna wait until November to start doing our interviews because people wanna know, you know? And so this, uh, we will start interviewing as the applications come in and once we reach our maximum, that's it. So I would, I would say apply early. There's a few questions le uh, left, but uh, this, there's some very good ones. Do the hours needed for certification ne need to be from dermatologists or a practice run by uh, practitioners that specialize in derm issues, such as family practice MDs? That's a very good question. They must, you must get your clinical hours from a dermatology certified nurse practitioner or a board certified dermatologist. Um, okay. That, you know, that, that I, I wasn't sure of that. This is another very interesting question. Um, they keep coming in though. Does the program talk about salaries or productivity bonuses, et cetera? It seems pay scale is all over the place on what a standard is. So we, we are working on a, a professional development um, seminar that we will have with our group. So we've been coaching them both personally and as a group. So we go over a lot of that information. But again, you know, it's up to you too. So our job is to empower you to get the, the job that you want in dermatology, hopefully with the optimal compensation. Oh, and this is a good question too. How are the total 3000 hours documented? You would have to go to the, um, the DMPCB um, and look at their requirements. Um, oftentimes, it has to be um, endorsed by somebody that you work with. And, and it's pretty reasonable. It's like any other um, certification. Like your preceptor hours have to be validated by signed off by the actual preceptor who's board certified or an NP. Right. How many times during the program do I have to come to campus? Twice. Okay. And uh, the last question is, uh, the program begins in January, right? Correct. The next class. And um, what, now we're going to close on this question. When is tuition due? <laughs> uh, I think it's due like by the first day of class. So it would be due January. I would say the beginning of January. And then the next semester would be in the middle of May. Okay. Um, uh, I, I want to thank both of you again. It was terrific to do this with you tonight. I really enjoyed it. And we do have a little remaining time left. Um, and my, vis my uh, visual diagnosis colleague, Mr. Mike Venanzi, is with us tonight. I think we have a little bit of time to wrap up with a brief demo addressing how visual diagnosis helps NP education. He will share his direct contact information for those of you who would prefer to schedule an individual demo. 
since we have just a little limited time left. So um, I guess we turn it over to Mike at this point. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Dunphy. Uh, thanks so much to Dr. Bolfin and Dr. Bonich. Thanks so much. This was uh, really exciting to hear about more of the more about the program. I'm Mike Finanzi. I'm the Director of Business Development for the East Region with Visual DX. Uh, I'm just going to briefly demonstrate how Visual DX works on the web. It's also available on your mobile device, uh, both Android and Apple. Uh, this is being offered through the FAU program as many as well as other institutions. We're in over 2,300 hospitals and large clinics and in over 50% of the medical teaching institutions across the U.S., uh, just some highlights as to how to navigate Visual DX and really the impact that it can bring to both the academic space as well as the clinical space. Uh, there's two approaches to Visual DX. You can quickly look up any diagnosis or you could start off with a chief complaint and build off of that to ultimately create a differential. So I'll demonstrate both of those examples. If I just want to search any diagnosis, you can search it right in the right to the search bar right here. So if I say atopic dermatitis, for example, and I look at atopic dermatitis, I can also adjust it from an infant child to an adult that does adjust the content as well as the images that you see. Uh, but what you're going to get is a brief synopsis, really written in paragraph form, intended to be used right at the point of care. Uh, you have your billing codes, things to look for. We also highlight the impact of skin of color and clinical on clinical presentation on many of the dermatological diseases that we that we list in Visual DX. Uh, diagnostic pearls. You have the textbook differential diagnosis and pitfall section with the hyperlinks, uh, so you can easily go back and forth between each diagnosis. Uh, best tests, how to manage it, uh, and then your therapy options. I do want to point out, this is not like a wiki model. Not anyone can just post something and, and tell you what they think it is. All the content, all the images that you see here do go through a very strict review process. We are a physician-led organization. Uh, but one thing that has made Visual DX world renowned is our image collection. And we have arguably the world's best collection of medical images where we've been purposeful in collecting all skin pigmentations across the entire Fitzpatrick scale. And so when you're at the image collection for each page, you can easily filter the images, adjust the skin pigmentation, and really provide confidence to the patient that you're making the right diagnosis by showing them a similar skin pigmentation of the diagnosis that you're trying to deliver. Um, from an academic standpoint, this is a great teaching tool where you can easily showcase how each, each disease looks in a, a type one versus a type six and everything in between. You can even adjust the body location as well. So if you wanna see it right on the arm, you can select it right down to the body location. One final point on each page, we do have patient handouts uh, written in a, a high school reading level, a really nice time saver. You can print it off, email it to the patient. It's written in both Spanish and in English. The other approach that I mentioned is, is starting off with a chief complaint, not really knowing what the diagnosis is. And Visual DX offers a guided workup to really help deliver what that potential uh, diagnosis could be through, through that guided workup to ultimately create that differential. So you can type in a chief complaint right into the search bar here, or you can select any one of these icons. I know the focus is on dermatology. Uh, you can utilize us all across medicine. You can see the different specialties that are listed here. Uh, but for the sake of this conversation, I'll focus on dermatology. And so if I do have a chief complaint in dermatology, I can select the icon, uh, both in skin of color and all skin types. So if I want to uh, see uh, a chief complaint in a patient of color, I can easily select any one of these more common chief complaints. So if they have a rash, um, I can begin by uh, stating what the uh, general age and the, the gender at birth is. Uh, and then I could select and continue to educate myself as to how to properly define that lesion. So if I went to smooth papule, you can easily get quick definitions of what a smooth papule is versus a smooth plaque versus cyst. If I went into erythema, I can see what the difference is between a blanching macule versus a blanching patch and so on. And so if I have a blanching macule, it moves it right over to the right side. Um, you can also see how it appears in light skin versus dark skin. The location, I can then uh, go through and say that it's specifically on the trunk. 
Uh, and then the signs and symptoms will just say that there's some itch, some fever, and the appearance of the patient is ill, and the onset findings is acute. Once I've established all the findings uh, in, in the uh, findings section, I can then view the differential, and then I can see how those findings appear in a weighted format. So at the very top, you're seeing it's matching seven of seven for a drug eruption. If I scroll over to, let's say, Rocky Mountain spotted fever in the differential, maybe not something that I would have thought about, uh, but based on the findings that are presented uh, within the differential, you can see that it's matching six of seven with itch being crossed off. We categorize this uh, five different ways. Consider first is the more common. If I go to consider second, you're gonna to start to see some more rare or uncommon diagnoses like Zika virus, chikungunya. Emergencies would be highlighted in red if they're life-threatening. Infectious diseases, drug-induced, or you can view them all. If I wanted to go in and learn more about a diagnosis, I can just view the article uh, and then go back and continue to browse through the differential and go through that rule-based process to ensure that I've, I've looked at all possibilities. So just a, a brief overview of Visual DX. If you do have any questions, um, I, I don't have my uh, PowerPoint up in front of me. You can send me a direct email at mbonanzi at visualdx.com. Uh, happy to address any questions uh, if you're interested in an individual subscription or perhaps a group license certainly get involved and, and uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks so much. So, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I work with Mike a lot and, and we're very anxious to um, share visual diagnosis with the broader NP community. So uh, we, are, we are here if you need us, uh, myself included, um, any questions you have about visual diagnosis. Uh, and we wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. We will be sure to share the recording with you. Uh, once again, we ask that you take a few minutes to complete the brief survey when you close out of your out of Zoom. Your feedback will allow us to continue to improve these events and deliver content that you look forward to. That said, our next topic is the changing landscape of headache management on August 3rd. Visit visualdiagnosis.com events slash events for details. Thanks again and good evening, everyone. Bye.